Hello my dear children. Welcome to the channel English Classes. How are you all? Hope you are doing good. Come on, let's learn together. Today, in this session, we shall discuss a beautiful lesson, My Childhood, about the childhood days of our former president, Abdul Kalam, which is an extract from his autobiography, Wings of Fire, and Part of our English syllabus of class 10th, 7th unit A reading. Dr. Awal Pakir Jainalubdin Abdul Kalam was born on 15th October 1931 at Rameshwaram in Tamil Nadu. He was responsible for the evolution of ISRO's launch vehicle program, particularly the PSLV configuration and for the development and operationalization of Agni and Prithvi missiles and for building indigenous capability in critical technologies through networking of multiple institutions. In his literary pursuit, four of Dr. Kalam's books are Wings of Fire, India 2020, A Vision for the New Millennium, My Journey and Ignited Minds, Unleashing the Power Within India, have become household names in India and among the Indian nationals abroad. Dr. Kalam received honorary doctorates from 30 universities and institutions. He was awarded the coveted Civilian Awards Padma Bhushan in the year 1981 and Padma Vibhushan in 1990 and the highest Civilian Award Bharat Ratna in 1997. Dr. Kalam became the 11th President of India on 25th July 2002. Let's see the glossary first. Estwile, former, undistinguished, not very interesting, successful or attractive. Ancestral, the race of people that you come from. Austere, simple and plain. Orthodox, following closely the traditional beliefs and practices of a religion. Summon, to order somebody to come to you. Conviction, the act of finding somebody guilty of crime. Segregation, the policy. Conservative, opposed to great or sudden social change. Ritual, a series of actions specially as a part of religious ceremony. Petrab, to make worried or anxious. Confront, to deal with a problem or situation. Optimism, a feeling that good things will happen. Now let's begin the lesson. I was born into a middle-class Tamil family in the island town of Rameshwaram in the Israel Madras state. My father, Jainal Lubdin, had neither much formal education nor much wealth. Despite these disadvantages, he possessed great innate wisdom and a true generosity of spirit. He had an ideal helpmate in my mother, Ashyamma. I do not recall the exact number of people she fed every day. But I am quite certain that four more outsiders ate with us than all the members of our own family put together. Kalam was born in middle class Tamil family at Rameshwaram. His parents were Jainal Abdin and Ashiyama. He talks about his father's wisdom and generosity of his mother. His mother used to feed many number of people daily. I was one of the children, a short boy with rather undistinguished looks, born to tall and handsome parents. We lived in our ancestral house, which was built in the middle of the 19th century. It was a fairly large pakka house, made of limestone and brick, on the mosque street in Rameshwaram. My austere father used to avoid all inessential comforts and luxuries. However, all necessities were provided for in terms of food, medicine and clothes. In fact, I would say mine was a very secular, secure childhood, both materially and emotionally. Kalam was born short and not much attractive to tall and handsome parents. They lived in their ancestral large old pakka house in the mosque street of Rameshwaram. His father's income was just sufficient for the minimum needs of the family. He had a secure childhood. The Second World War broke out in 1939. 
when i was 8 years old for reasons i have never been able to understand a sudden demand for tamarind seeds erupted in the market i used to collect the seeds and sell them to a provision shop on mosque street a day's collection would fetch me the princely sum of 1 anna my brother in law jalaluddin would tell me stories about the war which i would later attempt to trace in the headlines in dinamani our area being isolated was completely unaffected by the war but soon india was forced to join the allied forces and something like a state of emergency was declared at 8 years old during the second world war there was a sudden demand for tamarind seeds which he used to collect and sell and earn one anna there was a state of emergency he used to listen the stories of war from his brother in law jalaluddin the first casualty came in the form of the suspension of the train halt at rameshwaram station the newspapers now had to be bundled and thrown out from the moving train on the rameshwaram road between rameshwaram and danuskodi that forced my cousin samsuddin who distributed newspapers in rameshwaram to look for a helping hand to catch the bundles and as if naturally i filled the slot samsuddin helped me earn my first wages of a century later i can still feel the surge of pride in earning my own money for the first time during that time the halt of the train was suspended so newspapers had to be bundled and thrown out of the moving train on the roads his cousin samsuddin needed help so kalam went to help him he was feeling proud of his first income every child is born with some inherited characteristics into a specific socio economic and emotional environment and trained in certain ways by figures of authority i inherited honesty and self discipline from my father from my mother i inherited faith in goodness and deep kindness and so did my three brothers and sister i had three close friends in my childhood ramananda shastri aravindan and shiva prakashan all these boys were from orthodox hindu brahmin families kalam says that he had learned honesty and self discipline from his father and faith in goodness deep kindness from his mother even his siblings too his close friends were ramananda shastri aravindan and shiva prakashan all these were from traditional hindu brahmin families as children none of us ever felt any difference amongst ourselves because of our religious differences and upbringing in fact ramananda shastri was a son of pakshi lakshmana shastri the high priest of the rameshwaram temple later he took over the priesthood of the rameshwaram temple from his father aravindan went into the business of arranging transport for visiting pilgrims and shiva prakashan became a catering contractor for the southern railways these three friends were brought up without differences among them ramanand's father lakshman shastri was the highest priest at rameshwaram temple after that he took off his father's post aravindan settled in business of arranging transport to pilgrims and shiva prakashan became his catering contractor for the southern railways during the annual shri sita rama kalyanam ceremony our family used to arrange boats with a special platform for carrying idols of the lord from the temple to the marriage site situated in the middle of the pond called ramathirtha which was near our house events from the ramayana and from the life of the prophet were the bedtime stories my mother and grandmother would tell the children in our family at the time of sita rama kalyanam ceremony their family used to arrange boats for the idols to carry from the temple to the marriage site his mother and grandmother used to tell him the stories of ramayana and prophet at the bedtimes one day when i was in the 5th standard at the rameshwaram elementary school a new teacher came to our class i used to wear a cap which marked me as a muslim and i always sat in the front row next to ramananda shastri who wore the sacred thread 
the new teacher could not stomach a hindu priest son sitting with a muslim boy in accordance with our social ranking as the new teacher saw it i was asked to go out and sit on the back bench i felt very sad and so did ramananda shastri he looked utterly downcast as i shifted to my seat in the last row the image of him weeping when i shifted to the last row left a lasting impression on me kalam here tells about an incident at his elementary school when a new science teacher joins he identified kalam as muslim and asked him to sit on the la- last bench he and ramanand shastri felt very bad after school we went home and told our respective parents about the incident lakshman shastri summoned the teacher and in our presence told the teacher that he should not spread the poison of social inequality and communal intolerance in the minds of innocent children he bluntly asked the teacher to either apologize or to quit the school and the island not only did the teacher regret his behavior but the strong sense of conviction lakshmana shastri conveyed ultimately reformed this young teacher when they went back home they told their parents about the incident in the school lakshmana shastri asked the teacher not to show inequality and spread the communal intolerance in the young children's mind he asked the teacher to express apology or to leave the school the teacher realized his fault and was reformed on the whole the small society of rameshwaram was very rich in terms of the segregation of different social groups however my science teacher shiva shiva subramanian iyer though an orthodox brahmin with a very conservative wife was something of a rebel he did his best to break social barriers so that people from varying backgrounds could mingle easily he used hours with me and would say kalam i want you to develop so that you are on par with the highly educated people of the big cities rameshwaram was very strict in such separation of social differences the science teacher shiva shiva subramanian iyer his wife was orthodox and cannot accept sudden changes the teacher tried his best to remove the social differences the teacher used to spend much time with kalam and wished him for his development one day he invited me to his home for a meal his wife was horrified at the idea of a muslim boy being invited to dine in her ritually poor kitchen she refused to serve me in her kitchen shiva subramanian iyer was not pet up nor did he get angry with his wife but instead served me with his own hands and sat down beside me to eat his meal his wife watched us from behind the kitchen door the teacher shiva subramanian iyer invited kalam for a meal for his house of which his wife was horrified she was not ready to serve him in her ritual kitchen so the teacher himself served him his wife watched kalam from behind the door i wondered whether she had observed any difference in the way i ate rice drank water or cleaned the floor after the meal when i was leaving his house shiva subramanian iyer invited me to join him for dinner again the next weekend observing my hesitation he told not to get upset saying once you decided to change the system such problems have to be confronted when i visited his house the next week shiva subramanian iyer's wife took me inside her kitchen and served me food with her own hands kalam wondered if she observed the way kalam eat and when he was about to leave the teacher again invited him for dinner the next weekend he said that they had to face such situations when decided to change the system but next time the teacher's wife herself served kalam then the second world war was over and india's freedom was imminent indians will build their own india declared gandhi ji the whole country was filled with an unprecedented optimism i asked my father for permission to leave rameshwaram and study at the district headquarters in ramanantapuram 
India's freedom was almost coming up after the Second World War. Gandhi ji declared that Indians would build their own nation. The whole country was waiting for it. Kalam asked his father to allow him to study in Raman Ramanantapuram. He told me, as if thinking aloud, "Abul, I know you have to go away to grow. Does the seagull not fly across the sun alone and without a nest?" He quoted Khalil Gibran to my Hestian mother. Your children are not your children. They are the sons and daughters of life's longing and for itself. They come through you, but not from you. You may give them your love and not your thoughts, for they have their own thoughts. His mother was a bit hesitating, but his father convinced her, saying that to grow, Kalam had to go out. He quoted Khalil Gibran's saying also. This was all about the childhood days of Kalam. Hope you understood and enjoyed the lesson. Keep learning and keep smiling. Thank you.